Yo, this is a no spoiler review of the movie The Shape of Water, which is about a mute janitor named Eliza and her yearning for sea dick, you know, a sea creature. And this ain't no Aquaman. This ain't Jason Momoa because that I could understand. No, this is some old creature from the Black Lagoon looking ass MF. So, I mean, technically, it's about love and companionship, blah, 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 whatever. So, Eliza, played by Sally Hawkins, works as a janitor in some kind of government laboratory top secret research facility, of which I have no idea what they normally research. And might I add that they are terrible at keeping so-called government secrets. So, a creature, a sea creature is found and brought there. And Eliza takes a liking to this aquatic creature because, like I said, sea dick. Uh, you know, she likes aquatic masturbation. Hey, who doesn't? But she's like, oh, I can do you one better. Look at this sea nigga right here. He's kind of cute. Guess what, sea nigga? We're on a date now. Bitch, are you courting a sea creature? So that's what this movie is about. Um, there were really only a few things I didn't like about it. First, there's a villain, um, General Zod, well, Michael Shannon. Uh, you know, he was good for the role, but the character was a bit over the top and cartoonishly evil. Like his actions are so counterproductive. These are government officials and the rest of them are like, yo, this is the most sensitive asset that we've ever had. And Michael Shannon acts like a drunk stepfather to it. You know, he's like, eh, hey, whatever. And shocks the shit out of it with a cattle prod or some shit. Like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? I get it. He's the bad guy, but he's very 2D, you know, just I'm the bad guy. Watch me do bad things for no reason. And next, I will say that I rolled my eyes at the sassy black friend trope, especially portrayed by Octavia Spencer again. In this movie, all she does is babble about her useless ass husband, who, speaking of which, there's only one black guy in the movie, okay, for like six seconds, and he's trash. You know, he's the person I hated the most after the villain. So what does that say? You know, really, dude? And last but not least, as far as dislikes go, I think the creature looked like a guy in a costume. I couldn't get past that. The costume design was awesome, but it looked like a costume. Um, so what did I like about the movie? Well, it's interesting. Um, it's directed by Guillermo del Toro. And, you know, he's very good at creating this contrast between reality and fantasy and good versus e evil and typically really great characters. And actually, he's just an awesome story storyteller. And he wrote the story. You know, he co-wrote the screenplay and, of course, directed and produced. You know, I, I think he told and presented the story in a way that nobody else could have. And there's a lot of substance there, you know. But you have to take it for what it is. You have to suspend belief. It's classic Del Toro. It's a blending reality and fantasy. The best thing about it is Sally Hawkins. Um, she was a great portrayal of a great character. Uh, definitely gives you the depth that surprisingly most other characters lacked. Um, but she's, you know, just kind of this homely, lonely woman, you know, who finds companionship in someone or something, you know, who doesn't see her muteness as an imperfection. Next, as far as likes, uh, there's great visual imagery and uh, just to that, that with a really great score together, you know, created and heightened some very unique moments. And overall, it really pulled me into the overall story because this is two hours long and it was mostly able to, to keep my attention. The overall production, the attention to detail, the cinematography, like every shot, you know, just everything is so deliberate. Even Eliza's apartment and it being set over a movie theater, you know, and her best friend neighbor guy who's really got a lot going on for himself. And that storyline wasn't perfect and it was kind of choppy, you know, but it added a little seasoning to the film. So wrapping, wrapping up here, um, this movie's pretty cool. You know, like I said, it blends fantasy and reality with suspense and even humor. And all of that is wrapped up in a great production design. Um, the subplots and supporting characters were a little cliche. It was a little predictable and cheesy, but overall it was entertaining. I give it a 6 out of 10. I say wait for Redbox, though.